We've been known uh, for many years as being the leading manufacturer of engines. Designing an engine for the ZTR market from the ground up was really a great opportunity for us. We've gone out, we've worked with contractors, we understand what their needs are, and it allowed us to really focus in on making the best product we possibly could. When we talk to contractors and fleet managers about what role the engine plays on a ZTR, they were very clear. They want durability, reliability, but most of all, performance. CCs, or displacement, really determine the capacity of that engine, the potential that that engine has to deliver torque to the blades. There's been a creep of displacement over time. In the last four years, the average displacement of a ZTR has risen 50 cc's. And we feel that having an engine at 810 cc's is the optimum position for this engine to be, not just for this year, but for many years to come. This was a big step in durability for, for this engine. We, we want it to earn the Vanguard brand. We had a good set of requirements. We knew what the specifications needed to be to make this into a good engine. So making it the ultimate ZTR engine, it, it's a great engineering challenge. When I think about the features that I'm really most excited about on this engine, I start at the top of the engine. With 2014 ANSI standards coming in, our engineers were able to design this engine from a cooling airflow standpoint. And what we're doing is we're bringing way more air in through the top of the engine than our nearest competitor. The whole cooling system is unique with the debris management. By putting a, a large surface area uh, to pull the air through, uh, it keeps a very low restriction, even with a large amount of debris on it. And the higher volume of air that you can pump through the engine, the cooler it will stay. It's not just an afterthought to fix the regulation, it's, it's designed right into the product. We talk about the design, the design has special features. We increase bearing surfaces, we have a forged crankshaft, we have things in the alloy and the aluminum components that are unique to this engine. There's special things that we're doing in the die cast dies, in the alloy as I said, in the preparation, the heat treating. So there's a lot of uh, the components that, that bolt onto the engine that have been uniquely designed to go on the Vanguard engine. The valve covers, the cylinder head and intake manifolds, uh, we've gone to forged aluminum rods. We kept the weight down by staying with aluminum, uh, but we get the consistency and the strength of the material up by going to the forging process. Um, we have a very well established field test uh, site down in Florida. Um, they cut some, some, some pretty rough areas. The, the operators take a beating testing our equipment because we're looking to, to to get them in dirty conditions. Uh, we're trying to cut long grass, we're trying to load it up, we're trying to shake the unit around. I mean, we're really trying to, to punish this engine. So by the time the engine launches, we'll have close to 100,000 hours of total test time on this design. We have deliberately not rushed the 810 into the Vanguard brand. It had to get there through uh, development testing and lots of testing. Uh, to get it to the point where it meets all of the Vanguard performance and durability criteria uh, to earn that Vanguard label.